Hello and welcome. I am the Restless Kaiser. And I am Johnny B. Well, together we are Modeling, Modeling for Advantage. So, mate. Kill Team Moroc. Moroc? Moroc. Not Moloch. Moroc. Not the little blue men that Moroc. live on the ground in the time machine. It's not that them. was a scary film. What, the original one? The original yeah, one. Yeah, mate, fact. That's not a kid's story. Right, Kill Team Moroc. So the question is, is this box worth it? You've got to say, retail price of this has gone up £125. They've been creeping up, these Kill Team starter sets. But... So, it's a, it's is a heavy chunk of big. box. Yeah, and I think a lot of it is the scenery. So we get here, I'm sure you all already know, you've got two Kill Teams in here, you've got the four boss Marines... Uh, the Phobos Strike Team, and you've got the Traitor Guardsman, which I'm especially excited about. So let's get this open and see what you get inside. You ready, John? You doing it, bro? Oh my days. Oh, it's not sad opening, so you do get the... The giant hors d'oeuvre tray. I can't see my ruler, I was wondering how deep this is. That's getting on for six inches, right? No, maybe not, maybe not six inches, five and a quarter. And for some of us, that quarter is going to matter. <laughs> so, Kill Team Mar look at that. Oh, I just popped a shoulder blade out of it. Shoulder punch, but I'm bashing this out of it. This is just, well, deep. Immediately deep. confronted by a massive piece of... A massive, a massive terrain. landing pad. All right, we're going to sort these sprues out and we'll be right back. So to begin with, there is a mountain of scenery in here. We're going we're gonna to have a look at that because I think... I think a lot of people cover the miniatures in detail. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six sprues, and one that could have had a sprue round it, but doesn't. Doesn't really need is it. That, does that sound right? Is that the same as what you got there, John? Yes, mate. And you can see that's what it looks like. So we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, do, we'll get, get to the paper and stuff later. We're just going to have a look at these briefly. <laughs> so um, this is the Sector Frontera scenery. For all intents and purposes, yes. This is Sector, purposes. Sector Fronteras Plus. Sector Fronteras Plus. Um, so they recently released this, and I think to buy this scenery actually costs more than to buy this box. Really? If you just so want the scenery, like the, yeah. The doofer. So in terms of the question, is this box worth it? If you want this scenery, a lot of the value in this box is, is, is tied is into that. In and if you don't want that scenery as a value proposition... I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure how valuable it is. And we'll talk about those things as they come along. So of the, did I count it right? It's seven sprues, one, two, three, four, five, six. And that's the, that's the seven. And that counts, yeah. That, that counts, counts seven. surely. Right, so um, just looking at these then, so is all of this new, John? Because you've got some of this kind I'm, of from terrorist No, scenery. not all of it is new. Um, I can tell you, you get a duplicate, well, you thought when you were getting it out. So this double screw here, yeah. we've seen, so this isn't old though. Uh, no, it, isn't it's, new. it was certainly with the first wave of Fronteris. Yeah, yeah, which came out with the, like, the previous generation of Kill Team and, yes, the, exactly and, the, right, and yeah. the Eugene Steel Occult stuff. And these two sprues together are going to make that hab block or building or whatever yes. they're calling it yep. that you might have seen. So that's going to that's gonna tie up quite a lot of your scenery there. Um, but that, that's what that is. And the other thing about this Sector Frontera scenery is it's the same style of building and wall as the Riser Pattern Ruins, or similar enough that they look... It's exactly the same. Yeah? It really is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I forgot that they were called the Riser, Riser Pattern, Pattern Ruins yeah, originally. Exactly yeah. So if you've got some of those, and that scenery's been out for longer, it this fits. is going to fit in very well with it which I think is really nice. So then these other sprues have developed that scenery range to give mm. you a lot more. So the next one I've got Into here, tasty and there's, base, there's some weight to this, you know, this stuff isn't this hollow. This is heavy yeah. and particularly spiky. <laughs> yes. I think you could do some damage with this. Absolutely, it's one of these like using playing medievals and getting pikemen or something, yeah. spearing yourself on a piano wire. So this is this is interesting, um, just in it's it's providing walls for like enclosed spaces, yeah. mm. you know, not necessarily gardens, but like car parks, forecourts, whatever. Um, and then you've got these interesting sections which are going to do your corners and things, I think. You've got the yeah, little buttress bits, yeah. and then you've got, as you say, the which corner connections, in. which um, it'd be interesting to see how they, they work with each other. The shame about looking at this, 
just seeing it, John, is can you see there's windows and there's sprue yes, gates there is. in the windows? Two for every window. Two for every window. That's a lot of cutting out for somewhere where you feel there didn't need to be anything. Because this is pretty how sturdy rigid stuff. It is. Yeah. I don't think that was necessary. Um, but I don't know how much they get to prototype this stuff before. I don't know. Before making it, because it's the making the molds that cost the money, not the not the pressing the molds. It's a beast. It, it, it <laughs> it's really, really is heavy. heavy. Just but I like I like this, and I, I like this scenery set in general because it's the thing about Kill Team, um, it, because it's so closed in mm. uh, and drilled down that gardens and and satellite dishes and those things they they become important they because that you're at that level of detail. It's not just a piece of terrain. That it largely could be a hill or anything, like in 40 k It's like that blocks line of sight and you can't move into the middle of it. Yeah, there you go. You know, it's like, really no, no, no. In in this game, it's about place and and zooming right down into that small scale action, exactly where things are. So um I like that. And again, the height is good. Yeah, you can hide the primaris behind it, so you're all right. Yeah, yeah. You can you could because of these, um, the nature of these buttresses, you could probably, from certain angles, you'll be out, you'll be out of line of sight, and from others, you'll be obscured, which is nice. Um, and then the other bits, so they build these other bits of scenery. Now I'm not, I'm not, I'm picked up the the language. Have a look. Go on. So does it say it? So if we see on the, on, on the art on the box, we'll see if we can get a picture online for you. Hopefully we can. <laughs> otherwise, you're just going to see me staring yeah. at a box now, um, and maybe John waving at you. So. Um, You've got this this kind of radar tower, which is built mm. out of this one, which is nice and tall. And again, with Kill Team, this is your vantage point stuff. This looks awesome. These tie into the way the game works very well. And this, so this is, this is an antenna, whereas these other bits are going to build the, um, if you've seen the giant satellite dish. A huge satellite Epic, array, mate. which is which is that awesome. Is a lot looking. bigger than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, I mean, again, right? I've got a really crude ruler because it's actually a, a a tool from another game. So it's four it's four and a half inches across. Is is the is the actual dish? That's a meaty piece uh, on on the radar. And again, as as a piece as a scenery set, it's got some applique parts. You've got a few of these little. Um, uh, little Adeptus Mechanicus yeah. console type things on here. And you've got some wiring, but you've not got too much. If the, you know, if you're going to spend time painting the modeling in your hobby, you don't want to be spending it on the scenery. I mean, no. You want the scenery to be nice? No. It's optional. But you don't want a 200-piece kit no. for a bit of scenery. No, no, no. You know, you want a 10-piece kit, bit of scenery with a bit of customization. And these are nice, chunky, solid parts. Um, there's the massive landing pad there, and then this this last bit. I think these are the walls. That's what for you the perimeter. Put this on. <laughs> when we get yeah, when we and it, right down to having a little ladder, or some steps going Perfect. up to it. Yeah, nice. And then you can put that hand block thing on top. Yeah, which is they, cool. They, they tessellate. It's all, yeah, they all tessellate. Yeah. So you can have a bit of height this there. This looks like it, it could fit that width in it. And the antenna, yep. Yeah. Is that right? I it like looks, how they've gone very much. It looks modular. right. Yeah. Yeah. There's a degree of modularity. Yeah, because there's a there's a base there which is that size. So you can you can mix it up without too much work. And it because it's slotted, it looks like it'll fit in without Mate, it's cool. It's cool, guys. Look. It is cool. It is cool. And for kill team, you need a lot of scenery. Um, and you're getting it. Yeah. You're getting it. I mean, even if you to look on, on eBay, I'm sure these sprues are gone. These sprues have probably gone for 15 quid each. Certainly, as I said, when I looked into buying this, I was going to buy this scenery set for you when it came out as a scenery set, you remember? And because you already got did the other bits. Yeah, it I'm glad I didn't. Because we wanted this all along anyway, when knowing this, because of the two kill teams in it. When we get to the paper, we'll have a look, see if there's other recommendations about how this is built. Yeah, I am interested to see. Um, and when if you've bought this, they can be a bit naughty with their scenery instructions sometimes. I think sometimes the scenery is developed separately from the rules in the game. Right. I would I would have a bit of a scout around 
and look at other other YouTubers and other things about who built the scenery and see if they've learned anything really, from that. Well, we had this with Warcry and we had this with Last Oh, it, it tells you to build the scenery in certain pieces. ways, and then your mission two says you need this scenery piece, which you don't have because you built the scenery out of book, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, other people will cover that if it's a problem. Um, Hopefully, you know, and only if, if you if you really care about that. But there might be some things that you need to know about. So that's the that's the the what's it spruce. The other thing is the two kill teams. Yes, which is what which is what really attracts. I mean, for me, this is a fantastic set because I want both the kill teams. Well, I want one of the kill teams. You want one of the kill teams, and you've already got I want a lot of this of compatible scenery. So you know, everything in this box makes it. For us, for us, Perfect. great value, but many of the others haven't, you know, and, and you need to decide how much of this you want. So the bit, I, I don't know whether disappointing is the word, but the bit that's least interesting all of this is there are 10 infiltrators stroking curses in here. Is there? Can you have 10 in a... No. So it's just but I think, sorry I for options. I think you need six when we get to the book. Oh, and somebody the five man's in room. one of our last games, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the the, the 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 newer Space Marine teams have got six models. So they could have skimmed on this, though. They could have given you a mo no, monopause model from yep. one of the older sets or whatever. So these are making infiltrators that make your incursors. And that's all right, because these are troop choices in 40k as well. So I don't think anyone's unhappy no. getting 10 infiltrators. They're just not new. But to make it new, and this really pleases me, is there is... Oh, I think it's ended up your side. Um... Yes, I have thrown, two. You've got I two. thought, I thought maybe that, you know... They've done an upgrade sprue. So let's have a look at that, because these are new pieces for Space Marines, and everyone's fizzy always about that kind of thing, right? So new the pieces... What indeed. they've been doing with these is for the kind of pieces of equipment that you can take in Kill Team, you know, the all-spec scan and, the, and, and so forth, that you actually take and you pay points for in the game. Yeah. They're providing sculpted pieces to do that with. So what have we got on here that's, that stands out? Obviously we've got a few arms and a few weapons. We've got the smoke grenade. Which is cool. Uh, is We'd there, had a, is there a monopose? There was there a, was a, there's a There's a couple of monopose smoke grenades out there. I think there's one on a lieutenant and one on a normal trooper or something yes. like that. But now you've got, I mean there's, there's, there's grenades, but one that's actually steaming smoke. So that's a really nice little right arm to have Mate, anyway. Um, and these, they are in Phobos armor, but I think the arms don't look different to the regular info, uh, regular intercessors. Um, I think the only difference is the is intercessors the have you haven't got any. proper plates, like shoulder pauldron things. Oh, yes, Whereas but could you not guys... get a shoulder pauldron onto this? Over the top you, of this, yeah, most probably. To be fair, yeah, yeah, yeah. You put you put a uh, you put one on. You de you definitely can because these are not their their finished shoulder plates. No, there's there's more. There's as well. one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. There's one. There's one on single there. plate. Um. So yeah, you've got a couple of different di different hands holding bolters and different so forth, heads. which is nice. nice. You've got lots of heads. As a Space Wolf player, I'm really pleased. They're not. They're not helmets in most cases. These are these are bare heads. Yeah. And there's nothing not worse than a squad. Sing, I'm sure with, be I mean, I've, I haven't been tempted to have like it's my squads with identical heads. Just because uh, there's a finite number of beardy <laughs> guys out there. Just paint them all different colours. Um, but yeah, ev every new face I'm really pleased to see. Because um, you can mix that around your, your various thing. You've got another uh, another slung um, bolter here as well. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that looks weird. Offhand. I want to see nine. how that fits in. It's got a little blibbing so it fits in somewhere. There's also some, uh, there's a bigger upgraded all specs mm. on there, which it's is a massive mighty. One. Yeah. I just put my. Oh, it's got like a side it. It's got panel like an on extra it. bit, you know, you can yeah. do your shop yeah. whilst you're yeah. scanning for enemies. And then this, this, I think the Helix Adept has the. Yeah. The medic one. Did that, why did I feel that it come with it? The, the yeah, yeah, but this one's just probably it. just a little bit different. There was certainly there was a monopause one. Yeah. But yeah, the cust the customization here. This is just always pleasing to see. They can't do enough of these. I, I th it's it's really the point. And you can do them for everything, right? So why why is there not more already? Right. Yeah, absolutely. And well, 
if you look at some of the stuff that they've kind of re redone, this seems to be a route they're going down this this season. The upgrade sprues. Yeah, they did it with the Cadians. Yes, they did. As a, as a refresh. same base kit. They've they've done it with the. Um, I just said Imperial Guard. Um, they did with, it with the, the Tau. With the Tau, yeah. Else they've done, done it. With? They've done it here. I feel that they've done it with one more. Oh yeah, like the Black There's Templar's got chances. a really yeah. sweet they got a good upgrade one. sprue. Because when they first did eight, eighth edition of Primaris stuff, they did some really naff upgrade sprues, which was like three wow. heads, four shoulder pads, and a sword, or yeah. something. It gave a little bit of flavour of the chapter. Did it was not... a start, yeah. yeah. But people, people were buying the ones from other chapters and filing the pads down and so forth because to get just to get a different right or left arm. Um, so the more of that that they do, and a lot of these, again, the hands are not committed. So you no. could put you could put other things in them. You can mix them around heads, bits of equipment. Just make any power arms marines that getting it's that a kind bit of more yeah, for, yeah. For, for and, and of course, a servo skull is always awesome. Oh, yeah. I just want to see plastic servitors now and then. Plastic servitors, you heard it, GW. Uh, so that's the four boss. Let's have a look at the more interesting ones. I'm actually quite interested in this because this is the same style as to the ones we've seen. This is the Chaos Dude. Same style yeah, as so the ones we've um, seen on Blackstone. Yeah, so the other kill team that's in here is the... They're called the Blooded or something. The blooded. But they're, they're, they're traitor... Traitor Tra Guard. Traitor intense, Legions. Yeah. Not Traitor Legions, Traitor Guard. Yeah, absolutely. I think the name of the kill team is the... They've given them a name, have they? Yeah, yeah. That'll be in that there book. That'll be in the book when we get to that. Um, so, we've seen Traitor Guards move before, and I've got some, because they released them yeah. for kill team last time, yeah, and I did. think there were seven Traitor Guardsmen in that set. So I'm most of the way painted to be able to play these in kill team, because <laughs> uh, you've got another ten guys in here, but also they've given you... The Chaos Ogrin and the Chaos Commissar, which I think is called Traitor Ogrin and Traitor Dave. Enforcer in here. Um, now, obviously, these are monopoles. They're quite heavily stylized. Um, you know, you you wouldn't want three of these in an army because no. they look that like a lot of monopole stuff. It's really dynamic and and really striking, and it just looks weird having two the same. And you'd need some skills to. Be able to try to and get them. change these, yeah, yeah, I think so. I think so. Whether you could, you could definitely get that head on another ogrin, yeah, with simple a little bits bit of like that, but a lot of it like the other ones that intersect. Remember that halfling where you had to stick the oh, thing right through his backpack, backpack came through his belly and had his hand exactly, pressed onto it yeah. or something. I mean, it's it's genius, it's, it's the magic of very ready design yeah. monopoles, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, so that people have seen before anyway, so we won't languish on that. Um, uh, as I said, hopefully by now you've seen some pictures of the traitor guard that oh, I already sure have. Because uh, I painted them up very similar to this in um, the, the kind of Cadian colour yeah, scheme. Ultimately. Um, and they do look very similar to models. The style of it is solidly on board with that. So this is a two and a, two and a half sprues. This is mental. So these you can see nothing, but be assured that this the, yeah, is I'm yeah. quite this fizzy is, about this. this. Jam-packed. So you've got a style of, of King. So it's more like metal breastplate than the kind of um, flak armor or whatever that mm. the guardsmen usually have. They've got some woolen bit uh, some hairy animal pelt bits. Animal pelt. And a few spikes and a few bits of ragged bits cloth. Of chain mail. Um, really ex good chaos accent. But as a sprue, it looks and feels a great deal like the um, veteran guardsman. Yes, it's you exactly know, that. It, in that they've they've got a lot of. I mean, just a looking on here in terms of in terms of weapons, there's obviously a whole bunch of las guns. Some of them with blades, but I'm also seeing a plasma pistol, a plasma gun, a flamer, a bolter, a melter gun, a chainsaw. There's a shotty there, John. Is there? There's a there's a bro with a shotty. Scanning. No, that's a grenade launcher, mate. Oh, is that the grenade? Oh, it is. That's is like it? a proper. I'm too used to looking at space from a space marine. That'd be a shotty. Yeah, that oh, the is guardsman, like... that's a grenade launcher. Yeah. Like the you know the one single shot, snap the barrel, put the yeah yeah, but a shot, shot in. Uh, grenade launcher. You're absolutely right. Stunk. Yeah, there's got to be a shotty on there somewhere, though. Yeah, um, and and there's loads of chaos iconography on the, on there. They they look like they might have been originally Cadians, but they definitely don't look like Cadian that somebody just painted a bit darker and put a spike on his backpack. No, no, um, quite different. They're also 
quite a lot more elegant as models than the Cadians. Yeah, that's the interesting to see. The are very stout. They're very old school workshop with yeah. like massive ham hands and yeah, yeah. thick thighs. These are definitely a different caliber of yeah, of like the veteran guardsmen. Exactly, yeah. They're truer sure. to scale. I mean, the thing that always stood out to me with the with the Cadians, if you if you've made them, was the feet sizes. Oh, mate, the feet right. on most of the troopers were really wide, but on some of the ones on the command sprue had really narrow feet. And narrow heads too. <laughs> oh, and some of them. <laughs> the heads were like heads. really narrow. Some of them. Yeah, some. Not all. There's Not all some. of them. Not all of them. Yeah, absolutely. Interesting. So, would you be able to kit match these with some of the Cadian parts? I doubt it. <laughs> um, but you might get away with it. But yeah, so this is a really satisfying sprue. And then we got this other bit, which again. Yeah, what? This is like an upgrade for the... It feels like an upgrade sprue, but obviously this stuff didn't... Ex this doesn't exist outside of the existence of this. Yeah. But this might be a unique Hill Team thing or something they plan to sell you as an upgrade. Because what you've got on here is a whole bunch of extra heads, then some oh, cosmetic stuff. Guys have got melee weapons in offhand. That's hands. what this is. What? This is the melee bit, mate. Yeah, yeah. You've got you've got the, the slab shield... Guardsman size rather than Meat upgrade cleavers. size. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, and a few a few backpacks. So this whether they're planning to sell this to you as an upgrade sprue, but I don't think so. I don't thing. think they have separate numbers. Did they not? Part numbers. You know what I mean? It's not like part this doesn't start at one or anything like that, this one. I think these are coming together. You know, when, when they eventually release it as a kit on its yeah, own. Yeah, which is inevitable. Ah, this one, there is... That looks like a shotty. Du, 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 scanning. That is like a sawn like, like somebody with shotgun. Sawn off. Yeah. That yeah. is good. So, really pleased. I hope that these... They look very similar to the ones I've got. There's a slight risk that they might be a bit more slender. A bit more elegant. Mm. What might they find out? That's the sprues. I know a lot of people have covered this, all right. Yeah. But um, you know, so in terms of in terms of talking about value, there were spaces they could have skimped there. They definitely didn't need to give. They didn't need to give you that that upgrade sprue for the four boss marines because they didn't last time. No, you still had these pieces of equipment last time, right? Pretty much. They didn't feel the need I to. I don't give think you there's anything right? particularly. They didn't different. necessarily need to give you give you ten models either. They could have given you a, mon a monopause reaver or something and, and change change the kill team to suit the sprues. Yes. Which is not something that they wouldn't do yeah, necessarily. Um, so in, in, in terms of value, you've got two £35 boxes there of yeah, infantry at, least. at retail price. So that'd be 70 quid if you want them. So if you want those, this these two traitor guard characters were going for something like 30 quid as well, the pair of them. Uh, when they originally came out, yeah. yeah. It was yeah. a little upgrade, wasn't it? I can't imagine this would be less than 15 quid when it's sold separately with this. And I suspect it'll be more like 30. Yeah, a single character to 22. Now, when we're talking about value here, we're talking about value in games, workshops, on terms. Yes, yeah. It's which different. is very yeah. important yeah, thing yeah, to yeah. say. These Bear are not a pound a figure. No. <laughs> this, is, this is not the world that we're operating in. I am not saying this is value for money in an absolute abstract sense. I'm talking about in terms of if you want all the things in here, uh, this is a cheap way of collecting them. Because we're not done. Those, those are the sprues. £70 worth of sprues. At least £100 in scenery there if you wanted it. But there's the other bits to go. Let's delve down deeper in the box. We get the ubiquitous... Do you like these, John? These I do. I call them box toppers, but they're not at the I've top of the couple. box. Top, oh, no, they're box dividers. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, nice bit of artwork there. Yeah, but You've it's got... always dinged up because, yeah, well, it's, the because whole it's done its job. Yeah, yeah. it stops your paperwork and, and, and books. And I, I like the fact that rather than just have a bit of you know greaseproof paper or something, you know, a bit of cardboard, <laughs> they actually print <laughs> some of the art. some of the art on there. So this is this just stops the sprues damaging your paperwork. Yeah, and I think I'm, I'm really pleased that they do that. Get some bases, bro. All the bases. You get a, 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 a ogre in base there. What, separate? Mine was. Yours may not be. Oh, no. no there you go. You get paperwork. We're going to look at that. You get the... Boo! Ultramarines decal sheet. You can have that, <laughs> you brat. Uh, and, and a little bit of uh, tracing paper that's come yeah. off the front of my... Uh, really helpful. Uh, 
And then a gaming board at the bottom. Hey! So this gaming board, again, like the Sector of Fronteras one, is a nice kind of grainy desert board Ooh. pattern that's going to look nice underneath. It's going to fit really well. It looks like it's got some good... Spaces where the uh, market for it? buildings yeah. or whatever. Foundations, Foundations. Thank screen, you. whatever you got around screen. the outside. Screen. So there's your All gaming right. board. Correct. Um, it, I, I'm, I'm really glad they include a, a gaming board in all of these. It means you play different games of Kilt it. If you buy these boxes, you start yes, collecting a lot. Have different. The problem is that each of those terrain sets have been really different, so none of them are going to tessellate with one another. Mm. And I, I, I don't know whether you can buy these separately. Mm. And if you can, they're not going to be cheap. No. They're not going to be For what cheap. they are, no. For what they are, they're not no, going to be cheap. Not right. Value. All right, so the paper is the last thing to look at. The books. Shh. Right here, we've got a, a little manual and a little instructions booklets, right? Yes. Yeah. All right, you, do you want one of these, John? Do you need some instructions? I always need the instructions. Do you want, do you want to look at the instructions or the manual? You have a look at the book. Because you the book. Got a brain. There's two books here, John. You know, the book. I'll look the at the book, you'll have a look at the disruptions. Yeah. Alright. This is this is in itself. Yeah, the this book. is what you, you want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is not some flimsy pamphlet. Right. Let's have a quick scan of this. <gasps> right. right, we had a, had a quick scan through this. I, I, so there's about 30 pages of fluff in here before you get to the rules. And I have to say, one of the first things that caught me off guard is the art style oh, of this. I just realised what that reminds me of. Yeah? Mr. Blanche. That's very John Blanche. Even down well, it's to the orange and choices, black, so exactly. it's going to look John Blanche. But even down to the scrawlings of it, the pen lines, you can even see. Even down, down to the pen lines, quite messy. It, the, uh, it, feels like, it also feels like it's got a hint of um, 2000 AD. Yeah. And then, like, like, you know, which it... Unless I've missed something. No. I've not felt the other Kill Team stuff. Normally it's very violent. Same colour like, palette. Like the, like the topper. I was expecting this. Yes. I was expecting yes. this. Yeah. Instead. Absolutely. And the other stuff in the rule book is very, is very modern, very colourful, very clean. Whereas this is quite grimy. Yeah, completely. But it is Traitor that Guardsman, a, right? That was a nice surprise. Yeah, it was a nice surprise. It's not a complaint, just an observation. So you got your usual mix inside of your, your big full colour photographs, and this is how we painted the scenery, you know. And, and random name generator for you. Oh, I love those. For your Raven Guard Marines. Uh, ultramarine names. Go on, give us give, one. Give, give us a number between one and six, John. Uh, five. Five. Titus gives a number between one and six. Two. Terentius. Titus Terentius. Titus Terentius. If it had been a space wolf, it would have been... What's it got different chapter? Oh. Wolfgar Icefang. Wolfgar Icefang, at your service. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> and if he'd have been a white scar, he would have been Selji Gaul. Sell guy goal. Yeah, not so. so there you go. Not so. Uh, go, not name so generator table. I wonder if he does that for the traitor guard. I hope so. Mm. Bomb, spackle deck, stuff like that. But th those those things, the things that you don't need. But Which we um, don't. I love rolling on them just for yeah. hoots and just to see. Balls, and then choosing a different one because it sounds better. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, exactly. yeah absolutely. Right. So, um, oh no, names and demeanors. Go on then. So, operative name. Gives a number between one and six, John. One and six. Oh, so we're going to go. Should with I give you a dice go with for a this? Four. Going to go with the four. Shyara. Shyara, and four again. If there's another option there. Four. Yeah. Aril. Shyara Aril. Shyara Aril. There you go. Shyara Aril. Yep. Or if we'd use the other table for four and four, would be Verica the Fiend. Oh, the Fiend. She is. The fiend. Verica. Hmm. Yeah, it's not like, uh, oh, you get a roll for quirks. And all, none of this stuff makes a difference in game. No, um, but it's all campaign stuff. We've certainly found in the campaign stuff that we've done with other systems. It's been enjoyable. Is giving characters name, playing battles one after another with some legacy component really helps enjoyment of the game. So we're, we're actually tempted, aren't we, to, 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 to yeah. use the campaign rules for this? Yeah. We're not going to promise... Because I'm a bit worried that if the teams are off balance, we are committed to a series of games that are horrendously yeah, unbalanced. Yeah, but it doesn't need to be a long series. <laughs> yeah. It could be three well, games, exactly. four exactly. games. So you go, go back and look at look at that stuff. Um, so, yeah. I mean, other people are going to cover this in a great deal more detail. Oh, for sure. All this stuff. Uh, this is just our look at it. This, oh, this, this is just our look at it. 
So what do I know about the blooded kill team? I was just going to look about the, the bros, whether you can have both the traitor commissar and the ogrin. I suspect it's a one, oh, or, the one or the other. No, surely both. Right. So here's how they here's how they balance it. Right. So you get one blooded, which is blooded traitor chieftain. So that is a guy. That's your sergeant. Okay. Yeah. He's not. You then get nine guardsmen or traitor guardsmen. Okay. From a big list of various types, you can have a gunner and and da 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 da. da. Then you get four others. So there's a total of fourteen models, and that includes the enforcer, who's the commissar, and the ogrin. And regular troopers. So, but the Ogrin and the Enforcer count for two. So it's possible you could have 14 men or 10 men, an Ogrin and a Commissar. I know which one I'd be taking every time. The 14 random dudes. Not the 14 oh. dudes, no. Dude. 12 dudes, two of which are Mega Men. Yeah, but think about it. You get to roll more times on that name generator. That is true. And there didn't need to be an Ogrin table. No. So the, the, the Traitor Enforcer, how dangerous is he? Because he's a character in 40k, right? So how are they dealing with that? Well, in this game, he's got a defense of three and a four-up save, so he's not that exciting, and he's got eight Massively. wounds, That's pretty two standard. APL. So he's like a guard sergeant, really. So what's the deal, then? He must have some funky... Yeah, he's got some special rules that allow him, you know, he's got a uh, Enforcer, so like a friendly blooded operative, that is ready, that is not ready and visible within three inches, then you can immediately, that operative can perform a free dash action, or if he has an engage order, it can perform an overwatch action. So he can order somebody else that's within three that's inches. That's all right. Um, and he's got a grueling disciplinarian. While a friendly operative is visible and within three inches, it is not treated it as being injured. So he's got a passive ignore the wounded status thing three inches around him. And he's got a power fist, right? Which is no joke. Mm -hmm. um, for, well, actually, it most probably is on him. Right. Four attacks hitting on fours. But it still does five stroke seven damage and is brutal. So still, if he, that guy punches yeah, you, you're true, probably going to die. True fact. Yep. Uh, but the Ogryn... <laughs> The, uh, Exciting. The traitor Ogryn. So he had eight wounds and a save of four. So the Ogryn has a five up save, not quite so good, but 16 wounds and still two APL. So you can activate him, you know, he's not, he's not on his own. Um, taking like a single action or something, you know, they could have made him really lumbering. Yeah, they could have. Right. Uh, so he's got a power mole, which four attacks in on three, five, six damage, rending in stun. What about his crab claw? His crab claw, it's mutant power, it's power mall and mutant claw. Oh, he's, boo. Gone it. he's not got a separate stat line for his crab claw. Oh, boo. He's like, either <laughs> this or that. Um, avalanche of muscle, when he finishes a charge and ends up in engagement range, do D3 mortal wounds. In the 40k game, it's like on a six, do a mortal wound. In this, yeah. that's that, that D3 Just mortal get wounds. within. Just charge somebody. Wow. Chem enhanced, mate. You can ignore any or all modifiers to this guy's APL, and it's not affected by stun or critical hit. So that's really useful. That is really useful. APL, APL. If somebody's used some cheap trick on you to reduce your number of actions, or if he's wounded, you're immune to it. Doesn't that, if you're wounded, that any modifiers to his AP? I don't think no. you lose APL for being wounded. Uh, Brew. This operative cannot perform missions, pick up actions, etc. <laughs> But you don't need him to. You just need to bowl through the enemy. Yeah. So he's not. He's not super dangerous. A space marine with a proper weapon can probably put Could out more damage down than him in a couple of attacks. But he's got the wounds. Um, yeah. What's he going to be in the game now? Is this a giant bullet magnet that can't hide behind any of the scenery? Yeah. Right. But still soaking up all the plasma shots. All, all one of them. <laughs> all the plasma shots. Uh, yeah. And then you've got, you know, you've got some extra missions in here. You've got some new missions. Shadow Operative Mission Pack. So you can play this as its own sort of mini-series with a random table. And, ah, Kill Zone Morok. Yeah, so it's showing you in here. You've got the examples of the scenery as well. Ooh, painted. Painted. Yeah. Now, it does look as if... You've got a few options regards some of that stuff. And naturally, the destructions are what you'd expect by now. Colour-coded, beautiful. Nearly every miniature has got two or three 
options or nice. subsections, you know, like HC, DE. There are a few mm. options for all of them, uh, which is good. And the terrain is kind of cool. One thing that did catch my eye was the radar dish in itself. It looks like there's a few sections that you don't glue. So you can have it go up and down and oh, possibly- Oh, it's articulated. You can have it rotate. Yeah. Gyrate. Like you've got a few, gyrate and not, oh, oh, articulated. So there's a bit of movement in there, but yeah, it's exactly what you'd expect. Very clear, very concise. And there are options. And there are options. So there you go. But in here, it's it's only the, 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 the pretty. That's the pretty. That's the pretty. This is the pretty, is is the pretty finished like version. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, you already got this. So, mate. Yeah. What did you say it was again? Hundred and full retail. One hundred and twenty-five. We picked this up from a third-party uh, Welling Games, I think, for like ninety-eight, something like that. That's really good. But it was it was like maybe a bonus weekend, so there was slightly again in the discount. context of Games Workshop prices. That's really good. Yeah, the, there's no denying that the retail prices of these are creeping up. Yeah, but in the case of this one, there's a lot of plastic in it, I think and it warrants and, the and, price. Uh, value for me. If you're going to use it all, I think if you want to play Games Workshop, you you're stomaching a premium price, and in that regard, this set is good value. Yeah, yeah. In that regard, yeah. If you play Space Marines, unlucky. <laughs> well, you got no infiltrators. You've got some extra you probably haven't got. You've got a unique upgrade sprue. Yeah, you've got some new bits for yours, and I can't imagine anybody like would would say no if they said, "Would you like some traitor guardsmen?" That's Everyone would them. want them. It's just everybody if wants. You don't those, collect them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, nobody collects them. Yeah, and then, well, dedicated kit bashers and third party users. True fact. Um, and and of course, I'm gonna I'm gonna do exactly what I do with all these things. Oh yeah, when this comes out, I maybe get another army of them. Gonna, no, I'm not gonna get don't. another army of them. Don't do that. But. I already got some from last time. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, so you can just add those to, this. to it. And that's all you need. Just, just stay in slow. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you put the other stuff together and it went together quite the well. Didn't it? stuff, it's just blocks of plastic, mate. Yeah. There's little to It's very no difficult to get modeling. it wrong. Yeah. yeah. Um, these, I, I, I've not. I don't want to. I don't want to make claims. I have put some of the Blackstone Fortress together stuff before and. It would pay attention to the instructions thing. Yes. Sometimes by line of sight, it doesn't make sense. Although these are very small number of parts, so these are okay. yes. But some but of you them mentioned are like that if you accidentally put the thing, they're quite tight. Yes, they, they are yeah. no glue for a Ooh, reason. That's something maybe worth pointing out actually in relation to monopoles. Um, if you've not, if you've not done a lot of this, or if you're having trouble, if you find it when you put your stuff together, you're still getting a gap. Yes. Yeah, I think it's this is because the it's because the hole is over full. Yeah, when you've put glue in that hole, you've then that glue is occupying the physical space that the peg is expected to. A lot of this pegged monopole stuff is intended to be push fit. If you're gonna glue it, even says yeah, no glue. Cut the pegs down. Yep, trim it down. You can trim just them shave down. a bit off if you yeah. think it's too you, tight. You only as well. need to take a millimeter off the end don't of it. Don't be afraid. Um, and don't and don't. Be afraid to put glue on the seams. Definitely do put if you're going to glue them. Exactly. If you're going to glue them, glue them and cut the pegs down, or push fit. I can't call the push check, fit. Do check. Do check because if you do cut off that one millimeter and then it turns out to be integral to the uh, yes. arm going on, yes. then just just yes. look at the destruction. It's annoying because you can't dry fit. No. Well, you can. So sometimes you, you just can't together, get them out without damaging the model. They're tight. they're tight. Especially when they've got things like spikes on it. It can be difficult yes. to get hold of them at the angle you need to pull without shearing those then things Then you get off. the scalpel out and you put it in a gap. Then you cut, then you cut the blade. And blood everywhere. Pings oh, everywhere. Mate, terrible. yeah. Um, as, a, as a kill team set, I think it's great. Yeah. For an existing 40k player, I think if you want the scenery, you probably you probably would expect to pay this and this other stuff is this other stuff Bonus is free. Stuff, yeah. And from from what I've looked at it, the um, the kill team rules are interesting. The enforcer and the ogre, unless they've got some mental stratagems or something I'm missing, they're not broken. No, and that's important. And you don't need an additional supplement. I uh, know. No, this is the additional supplement. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Thinking about it, yeah. Okay, you do. <laughs> we need to buy this box got. to yeah, get yeah, yeah. This was a £125 supplement is one <laughs> way of looking at that, John. Anyway, oh. never mind. That were our thoughts on it. Um, 
we it's gonna be it's got like with all the stuff you know there's a painting queue there's a modeling yeah, queue you might see. there's a lot of things to do you might see him because you already got some Phobos Marines painted and I've already got some Traitor Guardsmen painted you one of your own Reaver, <laughs> Reaver. Um, which there, you can use Reavers in that kill team yeah but all of them not one that, that, that was our thoughts if you want the scenery this kit is worth it. If you don't, try and find a mate who does. Yeah. <laughs> you can sell it to. <laughs> Alright guys, thank you for watching. Bye bye. Bye. If you're still here and you're looking for ways to support the channel, there's obviously a lot of ways down in the description. But a key way is to use our affiliate links to Whaling Games and others. You buy your models from them, it doesn't cost you a penny more, and we earn a little bit of commission. Thank you. Hello and welcome. I'm the Restless Kaiser. And I'm Johnny B. But together we are... Modeling for Advantage. I missed it, mate. How did I miss it? Because I was thinking. All right, let's do that again. Let's... No, it's all right. I can't see my roller. I was wondering how deep this is. That's getting on for six inches, right? Your measurements are interesting, sir. Five.